Hi everybody, welcome to today's video. Today I would like to go through about statistics for the Global Talent Independent Program. I have been constantly asked by potential candidates, prospects, uh, about uh, you know how many allocations being given out. Do I have a chance? They think about if they have if they have many allocations being left out, they have a higher chance. Or if the allocation invitation are given out to everybody, then they have no chance. That it re so I want to emphasize here it's it doesn't really matter. So it only matters whether or not you meet the legal requirement at the time of a decision. When they make decision, they check your profile, say, okay, what is current law? Are you meet requirement or not? As simple as that. So I'm happy to share this statistics from well, sorry statistics statistics from for everybody. And this is actually can obtain from a immigration website. You can simply put. Uh, uh, freedom for information request and global talent independent program in a Google search bar you're able to find this information now you can see up to this point uh, this is this is a recent statistic and since November 2019 since the day uh, GTA was an announced until current one which is January most recent January 2021 we have received a immigration received issued a 4464 allocations remember for whole financial year we actually have 15000 of allocations we have a lot left but does that mean really you have a higher chance no or uh, so some it's really really not not about this now so you can see we are still not meeting the target the dark target is about 15,000 and we haven't been giving out enough invitations to that. So does that, does it mean that uh, requirement will be easier or harder? No, um, it doesn't really matter because they want really, they have made two areas of change. One, it is they want to broad, they want to attract candidates from all areas, even you're from in engineering. It can be accepted because they want to all, uh, in, you know, request all kind of uh, EOIs. And secondly, uh, the requirement will be a little bit more compliance. It doesn't really necessarily mean that um, it doesn't really necessarily mean that you have a higher chance because of we have many of allocation left and nobody claim that. Now, department really, really a uh, focus in this area. In terms of how many being not invited, you can see that thirteen thousand, about fourteen thousand, being lodged it, uh, about four thousand five hundred, four hundred sixty four invited, uh, and then two thousand seven hundred forty six was not invited. Now. Well, what about rest? Yeah, obviously, because the time of they doing the calculation, we still have some pending applications, right? We have uh, pending applications saying how many being still waiting in the system. Grand total. So in terms of that, they give you a format of this. You can see that about what month and uh, how many EOI launched it, how many invited, how many not invited. And so in terms of that, you can see this is really referring to majority of EOIs, you know, EOIs have more than two people, right? Have more than two people. Sometimes they have four. So one EOI means they have, uh, they have multiple, multiple uh, applicants, not just main applicants. So this is about grant number, the visa grant number issued to anybody else. Now, it doesn't really matter again about how many being invited, how many being left it. This is just referring to a statistic by the department about uh, about how many being left up. It will be always the case. It will be always this case that upon all financial year, there will be a lot of EOI has sorry uh, invitation hasn't been given out because why? Because the team member is not supposed to check EOI being invited or not, saying okay, because we have so many uh, allocations, uh, we just we just give out to everybody. No, it really depends on the competitiveness of other no, uh, uh, other uh, applicants in lot at the same time or similar period of time. Now, competitiveness is not about whoever working with you, but whoever apply at the same time with you. This is rhythm. 
And then when you have a, a better candidate, for instance, who's, who's stronger than you, who's probably your manager, for instance, uh, who is senior than you, and they apply, the department will definitely find out, oh, well, he's actually more senior than you. I think in this sense, that timing is itself in sense because you, you're going you're gonna to be ahead of everybody, not waiting everybody. You know, all team members got PR. Now you're the only one. And then now the department is just realized, okay, we have enough. We have everybody else is more senior than you. Um, so this is general advice for, for everyone who really want to seek GTR visa application. If you really want to seek for this one, you want to make sure that a, a number of invitation being lodged or not invite or invite, it doesn't really affect your application. You just need to make sure at the time you apply, you meet the requirement. Some of our candidates, for instance, they're high, they do not meet high income threshold or um, they, they are not about, they are really close to that and then they're working in very good industries uh, they know they are need to be underpaid now in this sense you know you you have a room to improve really isn't it you have room to improve that you just want to to have a senior job in really reputable kind of companies and take a greater responsibility you have year um, you know one year or so to improve um, some of the candidates actually approach us for instance they say okay i just recently found a new job i just got new offer now that doesn't really uh, change much because you just started. Now, if you come back, say a few months later, oh, I've got a new job and I've got quite a few pay slips. You can see that I've got a new position here and it's a great company. I've done a few life, nice jobs here, project here. Uh, you know, do you think the department going to reconsider? Yes, obviously that is the case. Now, if you do not meet high income for a hold now, and it's uh, you can demonstrate that there is a really, it's really promising in Australia. You are likely to attract high income. Then you still can apply, right? You can still apply because uh, industry threshold, it's really depending on the industry, it's depending on the country, a uh, lot of factors that uh, is con under consideration. No, it's not considering, say, you have to have a high income now. Uh, some candidate, you know, thought about anything about currency uh, exchange. I'm not. Um, so this is not strictly follow with uh, the currency fluctuation. This is really, really referring to whether or not you are able to obtain high income. Once your permanent visa is approved it, because this is assumed that you are a very senior person, you are likely to contribute and pay a lot of tax. So um, even that it's a little bit change on, you know, currency, you do not need to consider too much about, oh, exactly how am I, am I going to meet the requirement? Uh, today I meet the requirement, tomorrow, oh, uh, that uh, currency change, then I don't need the requirement anymore. That is not the case. It's really referring to how much likely you're able to get high income in Australia. Here, every year they change, the next year you're going to go increase. But does it mean... The, the, you know, you know, you, you will not meet requirement. So I just like to share this one statistic with you about how many invitation being invited, received it since the, the the announcement on this program. You can see we have less than five thousand, uh, five thousand. It's more than one year, more less than five thousand. That's a lot of allocations still, uh, it's still there waiting for people to claim. Now, if you believe you you are one of the candidate departments hunting, please contact us directly for free assessment, and then I will see you there. Thank you. Bye bye.